So I'm here in Bladensburg National Park. Now Bladensburg National Park is located a little bit south of the town of Winton in uh, Queensland. The reason I came here is because uh, mainly to do some wildlife photography because there's supposed to be a good population of red kangaroos as well as emus here. Well all right I'm gonna get exploring and keep looking for some wildlife. And then sure enough, not even a kilometer down the road, I spotted a red kangaroo. Oh, and he's hopping. Missed him, he hopped away too quick. I might have gotten an image, but just didn't have a view. Now he's resting over there in the shade. I might get my tripod out and try and sneak up on him. We've got two of them just right in front of me. I think one's a male and one's a female, because the male red kangaroos will be red, while the females will actually be a little bit uh, gray or dark brown. They're still a bit too far away out there, so I think I'm going to try and sneak a little bit closer and see if I can get some images. And it is the middle of the day, so it is very harsh light, but uh, it doesn't really matter in taking these pictures, just because the color is not too vibrant. So even during the day, I don't think the images look too bad. Oh yeah, he's still not getting afraid. He's letting me sneak right up on him. It's just with him in the shade isn't too good. So I wish he would hop out into the sunlight. Dang. I just got pictures of his uh, jumping away from me, unfortunately. Oh yeah, he's way gone now. And so is the other one. I don't see the other one. Well, alright, I'll head back to my car and keep driving around looking for wildlife. So I saw another red kangaroo, and I think it was a male because it did look red and it looked pretty big. It kind of hopped up over this hill here. So I'm just going to go for a walk and see if I can see anything. And I am struggling with photographing the kangaroos as well with um, uh, heat distortion because it is pretty hot here. So if I'm too far away, my images aren't going to be sharp because of the heat waves. I haven't seen many red kangaroos in my travels through Australia because they're mostly nocturnal so you don't see them during the day. And when you do see them during the day they're usually always fleeing. But now he's just sitting in the shade so the light's not too good. Every time I get close he just and get my composition set he hops away. So I'm just kind of keep stalking him and hopefully he gets annoyed and just knows I'm not going to hurt him and stays there. Oh, these flies here are terrible. Oh, there's one over there. There he is. Now for my settings, since it is the middle of the day, I'm able to do a one one thousandth of a second for my shutter speed. And then I'm shooting at uh, the most open aperture I can, so between 5 and then 6.3. And then ISO 400, just so I can maintain that fast shutter speed even as he goes into the shade. Tonight I decided to do some landscape photography because right here in the desert we've got this nice tree in front of me that looks pretty interesting. So I think I might be able to get a composition with the tree. And we also have uh, some clouds in the sky, not too many, but hopefully enough to have a good amount of interest. Well it's almost sunset so I'm kind of hurrying here. So for my composition here, I kind of want to implement these bushes because they're getting some real nice light. But unfortunately, the only clouds that I have are way over there. 
So I, hmm, and there's really no bushes in line with the tree with the clouds. But I'll see. Oh, there might be something over here. I didn't give myself much time to uh, find a composition today at all, that's for sure. So I ended up uh, finding a composition. I didn't really uh, make it in time for the sunlight, but that's all right because we're getting some real nice color in the clouds. So I've just got this tree on the right of my frame, then the clouds on the left of my frame, and that's pretty much it. Just a pretty uh, minimalist image, just very simplistic. And I'm using a polarizer and a 10-stop filter. And I'm shooting at 30-second uh, exposure, F8 ISO 400. That way I don't have to uh, go under 30 seconds for my long exposure. So I'm here in Porcupine Gorge National Park and there's this trail that accesses the bottom of the gorge and that's where I'm hiking to now for sunset. And it's really nice out today. We've got some really nice clouds in the sky. So hopefully they'll catch some uh, light tonight and I'll be able to get a good photograph. It's only about a mile hike to where I'm going, so it's not too bad, but I guess they say it's kind of a steep hike. So I guess we'll see. So I actually did come here today with a subject in mind to photograph. This uh, big rock they call Pyramid Rock. I'm gonna go over there for sunset because it looks like a perfect sunset location because uh, the sun's gonna set over here and the pyramid will just catch all that light as the sun sets. So I'm looking for a place where the river leads right into Pyramid Rock in the background so I can use that as a leading line to add an element of interest to my foreground. But I still think I need to get a little bit closer and I have a wide angle lens so I'm not too worried about getting too close. So I already found a composition I'm really happy with. Well, we still have about an hour and a half until sunset. I was here real early and I found something faster than I anticipated. But uh, yeah, I think I'm still gonna set up, fine tune my composition, and then just wait until the light gets good. And I'll keep taking pictures throughout the next hour and a half, just because the light is gonna change so much. And a lot of the stuff that's in light now will be in darkness in just a matter of minutes as the sun drops behind the side of the gorge. So I'd like to go over the composition here. What I have is I just have this little uh, green shrub in the left, and then on the right it's being balanced by these two rocks here, and then we have all these streaks and lines in the rocks in the foreground, so those kind of lead your eye to those two things there, and then the river bank leads your eye back to the pyramid. But also uh, this bank over here streaks right in towards the pyramid as well. So pretty much wherever you look in the scene, you're being, your eye is being drawn into the pyramid using all these leading lines and S-curves. So unfortunately, all the clouds that were in the sky above the pyramid are now gone. And it doesn't really look like there's any more rolling in, unfortunately. And we only have about 45 minutes left until sunset. Um, I was really counting on the clouds being in the sky because it would have made the scene just so much better. But uh, now I just might have to wait until blue hour and see if there's any uh, hues that go in the sky. And we actually do have some real uh, thin wispy clouds. So I might get lucky and they might catch some light tonight. And that's it is always very challenging when you're shooting in the bottom of a canyon or a gorge. Just because the sun will go down on the rim of the canyon or gorge way before the light gets dramatic in the scene. So it causes for uh, challenging images because you ultimately want to get a shot where the sky is nice and colorful and there's sunlight on the scene as well. So we are starting to get a little bit of light in the clouds. Uh, nothing too dramatic, but it is enough to bring out detail in them. So at least I won't have a blank sky in my image, which is pretty good. And actually now the light's becoming pretty balanced and not too much color in the sky, but a little bit. So I'm able to get the shot in one exposure without having the highlights or shadows blown out. So I'm shooting at 13 seconds, F11, ISO 100. <laughs> 